Hello and welcome back to DC to Daylight. I'm Derek, and previously we did a video on the theory of inductors. In this video, I want to try out an application that revolves around inductors and mutual inductance between two coils. And we can demonstrate the theory of mutual inductance using what's called an LVDT, or Linear Variable Differential Transformer. The LVDT is a neat little sensor that has a single degree of freedom and can measure linear displacement and vibration. It also uses some pretty clever but simple tricks to perform this measurement accurately. So I want to try and make one of these from scratch and in parallel build a detector circuit so we can extract that measurement signal. So let's get into the world of linear variable differential transformers. So what is an LVDT? So basically it's three inductors wound on an air core. Typically what we're doing is we're measuring some kind of vibration where we have a shaft that's moving in a linear motion this way. Or maybe it's a control system for an aircraft, right? Or some kind of flight simulator. And we want to measure the displacement of that shaft to determine our position. Basically, the goal is to energize this center coil, okay, with our function generator. And the frequency of that needs to be such that the period of that waveform is, you know, at least five times the frequency that we're measuring, okay? And the reason is ultimately we're trying to remove uh, this higher frequency component from this lower frequency vibration. We'll look at a simulation in a minute that'll show exactly what's going on. But we have two other coils here, and one of them is going to be in phase with the source, while the other one is going to be 180 degrees out of phase. And how do we do that? We just wire this coil backwards. And what we're gonna do is manipulate the mutual inductance. So if we have this coil in phase, this coil 180 degrees out of phase, and right now, if we connect these two in series opposition, then the output should be zero volts, even though we're energizing this with say 10 volts, okay? Now, if we cause an imbalance in the mutual inductance between one coil and the other, we're gonna see a shift in voltage. So how we're gonna do that is we are going to use a ferrous material, that means it has iron, okay? And we're just going to manipulate it inside of this tube. So as we move that core between these two coils, this one's out of phase, okay, we'll get a negative voltage at the output. And if we move it this way, we'll get a positive voltage at the output. And if we center it, again, the mutual inductance is equal between these series opposed coils, and the output voltage should be zero. So this LVDT is just for demonstration, so you can see what's going on. There are actually going to be uh, many more turns on these, uh, so we can increase the series resistance, uh, so we don't load down our function generator. For now, I'm going to use some glue to keep this guy in place. For that, I'm just going to use some E6000 and pop it in there. Oh no! Part of the reason why I wear gloves. Okay. So to kind of recap what's going on here, we have three coils and a ferrous rod that can travel inside of the coil form. The center coil is driven with a sine wave, and there are two adjacent receiver coils. One is electrically in phase, while the other is 180 degrees out of phase. Note the phasing dots and the polarity of the sine wave output signals. If we align the ferrite rod so that it's centered between the two receiver coils A and B, the mutual inductance between coils A and B are of equal magnitude, but their polarity is opposite, so the net output voltage is zero. Now, if we pull the rod out so that it's centered between the driving coil and the out-of-phase winding B, the mutual inductance between the source and coil B swamps out coil A, so voltage at coil B is at a maximum amplitude. Its phase is also 180 degrees out of phase. Now the overall output voltage is negative. Of course, if we push the rod in, the opposite is true. The mutual inductance between the source is maxed out, therefore the output voltage of the LVDT is positive and in phase with the source. Now if we connect it to some vibrating thing like a shaft, the output voltage and phase will oscillate, and we can measure this. So this explanation is a little misleading. If we measure an AC voltage with an analog meter, it will simply show the amplitude and not give a care about the phase. So we need a detector circuit that will rectify and fill in the gaps of the sine wave so that we're left with a DC voltage indicating where the rod is within the stroke of the LVDT. So now let's wind a real LVDT, then we'll take a look at a simulation that you can download and play around with on your own. So here's a simple uh, simulation of what's actually going on. We have our LVDT kind of represented by these two voltages here. We have a source voltage that excites the coil at uh, 5 kilohertz and a peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage of 5 volts. And I'm kind of simulating that rod oscillating inside of the LVDT with this voltage here. So this is uh, 200 millivolts 
and a frequency of 100 hertz. And basically what this is, is a bipolar peak detector. So we have a diode that is rectifying the signal and we're kind of filling it in. And this resistor in combination with the capacitor sets the time constant or how fast that capacitor gets discharged. So our frequency of our source in combination with this RC time constant determines how smooth that waveform is and how fast it reacts to this oscillating uh, vibration. So let's simulate this and take a look at what the waveform looks like. If I tap off of the high side of the LBDT source signal, you can see we have our 5 kilohertz sine wave and riding on top of that is that 100 hertz vibration. So I want to extract this 100 hertz vibration and uh, remove basically as much of this 5 kilohertz signal as I can. So that's the purpose of this diode and the capacitor resistor combination here. So let's tap off that. And you can see we kind of have this uh, DC signal and that's what we want to pull out. One of the problems with the simplicity of this circuit is that using an LVDT, usually the output signal is much lower than the knee voltage of this diode. So you have to connect it to a signal conditioner, an amplifier, things like that. So, so if I reduce this uh, source voltage, which will kind of simulate what the LVDT would actually be outputting, uh, and I change this from five volts to say 200 millivolts, and I do the simulation again, 200 millivolts oscillating here, but the output voltage is basically zero because the diodes are not turning on. So in order to solve that, we could replace these single diodes with a precision rectifier. So what I've done here is I've replaced those single diodes with this precision uh, detector or precision rectifier. Okay, so that's what these two things are here. As you can see, we still have our RC combination on the output that's going to do the filtering and recovery of that uh, DC signal, that low frequency component. And I've put a couple of buffers on the output since we're using an LM324 as the op amp. Um, we have four op amps inside of the chip. So the LM324 has a terrible slew rate, so normally you wouldn't use it in a high precision application, but we're measuring a frequency, you know, in the kilohertz range. Actually, the vibration is 100 hertz, so LM324 is fine in this application. So we've got those precision rectifiers, and then we have our, our filter circuit, and then we have a buffer output, which basically just kind of isolates uh, this stage from anything we connect to the output. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so running the simulation, I've changed the voltage down here to 200 millivolts. This is this 0.2. So that reflects the voltage that we're actually gonna see from the LVDT. Now, if I probe just after the diode where that filter circuit is, you can see I'm riding on top of that guy. So even at 200 millivolts, the precision rectifier is doing its job. So we're kind of overcoming the limitation of the threshold voltage or the knee voltage of these uh, 1 in 4148, so which are small signal diodes. Let's go ahead and look at the low side of this. So if I probe uh, the output of this precision rectifier, you can see we have a sine wave. It actually should be down here and I have to manipulate the math to make it look proper, but we have these two waveforms. One's out of phase. And now I'm gonna get rid of this green trace and just try to clean things up here. So what I'm gonna do is look at the difference between the two output voltages. So V out underscore high, and I'm going to subtract V out low, and we'll have the difference between these two uh, outputs. Okay, so it doesn't look pretty, but you can see that we have recovered the low frequency 100 hertz signal and we still have some of the stuff that's uh, left from the 500 or the 5K excitation voltage. So we could add additional uh, filters at the output of this buffer stage to kind of remove even more of that content. And we can do that by using a low pass filter with a, a steep drop off, so, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. So let's look at the actual circuit. So here's our LVDT. We've got our three coils. The center one is driven by the function generator at five kilohertz. This is receiver coil number one. Okay, it's in phase with that driving coil. This other coil is 180 degrees out of phase with these guys. Okay, and the uh, plunger, I'm gonna call it, uh, has this uh, bit of drill bit that I cut off and that acts to increase or decrease the mutual inductance between these coils. So normally in an idle state, it would be centered between uh, these coils. Of course, if I pull it out, uh, between these two coils, the mutual inductance is, increases here and the voltage from this coil drops down to zero. And the opposite is true for these guys, okay? The output signal from these two coils goes to this side of the LM324 and we have, uh, you know, mirrored circuitry here. This one is uh, the top side precision rectifier, this one's the bottom side. Both of those get fed over to these buffer amplifiers, so we're utilizing all four portions of the LM324. The outputs of those go to these two guys right here, which are the traces on our scope. And I'm also monitoring uh, the output of this guy through a T connector on my function generator, which you can't see off screen, okay? But let's take a look at that waveform. All right, so here is the excitation voltage at five kilohertz signal we're sending to the center coil of our LVDT. Now I've got that slug in the center of those coils. So let's turn on one of these traces. We'll turn on the high side and you can see the output voltage. This is the output of the peak detector. So 
It's a little choppy, but we kind of expect that. Um, and we could do further filtering on this, of course, if we wanted to. Um, so that's the high side. Let's look at the low side. So that is a low side rectified voltage. Again, we don't have that uh, slow 100 hertz uh, oscillation because I'm not actually moving the slug and not moving the coil. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's push the coil towards uh, one side. This will be the in-phase side. So the high side increases and the low side decreases back to zero. Okay. If I pull it out the other way, we go in the opposite direction. Okay. So that rectified signal is getting pushed lower in the negative direction. If I telescope to take that differential signal and give me an output, if I go to the math menu, I can tell it to take the difference of that or add them together. In fact, I should say. So it's adding these two signals together. We have a positive signal and a negative signal. We end up with just about zero in the center there. So if I move that coil out again, that output approaches the negative rail. Okay, if I push it back to the center, push it back to the other end of the LVDT, we go in the positive direction. Okay, let me turn the math off. So you could take just the top trace and that could be your output of your LVDT and that would go from positive down to zero. Okay. Or you could just take the negative part of that signal, and as you move the core, you can go negative. But by adding those two signals together, if I turn math back on, that allows an approximate zero volt output when the LVDT is in the center position. When we pull it off to one side, it goes full negative. We push it to the other side, it goes full positive. Okay, so it's a bi-directional signal that reflects the position of the ferrite rod itself. And we could, of course, uh, make this signal look much nicer and cleaner if we were to use another uh, series of low-pass filters. Uh, we could get it looking even better. But this is the basics of how an LVDT works, and uh, that functionality is based on mutual inductance. So there you go. Well, that's it for LVDTs. So I think these are just the coolest little sensors, and they're easy to make, and as you've seen, easy to make a detector, which makes this an approachable project for pretty much anyone with some wire and a coil form. Also, you don't need to get a special coil wander like I did, and actually, I've gotten better results using a standard power drill. So there you go. Anyway, if you've actually designed an LVDT, I would certainly love to hear from you. I'm very interested in how to come about with the proper physical dimensions, not just winging it uh, a bit like we did here today. Also, if you've used an LVT in a DIY home project or hack, I definitely want to see that, so send me some pictures. You can do so in the link down in the description. And well, that's it for me, so I will see you next time.